Hey guys, in this video we're going to teach you how to set up and breed your own mealworm colony. So guys, when it comes to setting up mealworms for feeding your insect-eating lizards, mealworms are probably the simplest of all the insects that we work with. Basically, you're gonna need some type of plastic container. It can be like one of these kitty litter tubs, even a bigger Rubbermaid tub. It can even be one of the stacked drawer type Rubbermaid or Sterilite containers. You're gonna need some kind of vegetable for moisture, like a carrot or a potato. We actually prefer carrots over potatoes, but they that option is entirely up to you. You're also gonna need some food and we do recommend our brand of insect buffet. The first thing we wanna talk about is ordering your mealworms. One of the things I wanna caution you about, and a lot of people have found this out the hard way, is that when you order your worms, make sure you get a tracking number and you know exactly when your worms are gonna be delivered. The reason for that is, if a postal company was to leave a, a box of mealworms like this sitting out on the doorstep or on your front porch or even in your driveway, it's only a matter of minutes before ants can invade this box and ants can wreak havoc and they're nearly impossible to get out of your mealworm colony once they get in. So make sure you know when they're gonna be delivered and there's somebody there to receive them or else have them held for you to pick up at either a FedEx, UPS, or Post Office Hub. If you watched our video on setting up super worms, you'll remember that we showed you how to set up your worms on a pine substrate with a feeder dish over to the side. In that video, we made mention of the fact that you can line the bottom of your plastic tub completely with your food. What we're gonna do in this video is just that. We're gonna line the entire bottom because mealworms like to burrow in their food. So you only wanna put about enough insect buffet in the bottom of your container to completely cover the bottom. About three quarters of an inch to an inch thick will be sufficient. All right, next we've got our box of mealworms opened up here and all we're gonna do is simply pour them right inside here, right on the top of the substrate. Now you wanna look around in your box real good once again, you can kind of flip the bottom of these up because a lot of times in transport, you'll have mealworms get down on the bottom just to make sure you get them all out. Once you got them poured in here, these guys will start to burn around in the substrate. That's pretty much all there is to it. It's not any more complicated than that. This is the way you set up mealworms for having feeder mealworms for your insect eating lizards. But when it comes to giving them moisture for something to drink, we recommend carrots like this right here. We take our carrots and we cut them like this. And then I like to simply cut them in half or if you have large carrots like we have here, you can cut them in quarters like so, and then we lay them in the substrate just like this. And you wanna replace these, after about three or four days, they'll start to dry out and get a little moldy at that time. You wanna take the old ones out, make sure there's no mealworms burrowed into the little holes that they'll make in your carrots. Simply discard them and replace them with fresh carrots. And that is all there is to setting up mealworms. Now. I wanna share one last tip with you real quick of how to remove your worms from uh, your feeding container in order to feed your bearded dragons or whatever you're feeding. It's basically as simple as when you put in fresh carrots, they're gonna flock to the top of those carrots. Simply take the piece of carrot that has the mealworms on it out, bring it over to your dragon or your gecko's container and knock the worms off into the container. So in a short period of time, generally around two to four weeks, you're gonna notice that the food in your mealworms container has been completely eaten and you're gonna have a fine powder in this container which is called frass. Basically, it is the worm's poop. That frass is a great fertilizer. If you grow vegetables in your gardens, you can use that. It is a very, very good fertilizer. But the way you wanna get the frass out is to simply sift your mealworms. What we use is a sifter like this. It's got a fine screen mesh 
It will allow the frass to fall through, but it will save the food that you have remaining. It will also catch all of your mealworms. And then you simply fill another container with insect buffet and start the process all over again. Now, for those of you guys who want to go a little bit further than just setting up mealworms to feed to your insect eating reptiles, you can also breed them. Uh, you can feed them to chickens, quail, all different kinds of animals love mealworms. We're going to show you in the remainder of this video how to set up your own breeder colony. Now to begin with, you're going to want to follow the directions just basically to set up mealworms. In time, your mealworms are going to change from a worm into this stage here. Now we like to refer to this as the alien stage because they simply look like little pale colored aliens. Now this is the pupa stage in between the worms and the beetles. It's going to take about a week from the time you start seeing these little alien looking creatures for these to turn completely into the beetles. Now what we recommend you doing here is setting up a separate breeding container. Now when you go to set up your beetles you want to make sure that your substrate is a little bit deeper with the beetles than it was with your mealworms simply because you're going to raise your baby mealworms now in this same substrate. So make sure the layer is about twice as thick as it was when you were setting up mealworms for feeders. Now simply take your beetles, pour them right on the top, and then take you a piece of egg crate and place right on the top of your beetles. Also, you want to make sure that your egg crate doesn't come up over the top of your plastic container because you don't want your beetles being able to crawl out. When it comes to giving moisture to your beetles, all you have to do is simply place your carrots on the top like so and they will crawl out from underneath it, come up to the top to get moisture as they need it. Pretty much this is all there is. Now you want to wait about three weeks. Generally speaking, once all your mealworms have completely turned into beetles, in about three weeks they will have laid eggs. Those eggs will have hatched. Now you want to simply sift out those beetles and we'll show you how to do that next. So after about three weeks, you want to remove this right here and you're going to want to save this for your next container that is going to be containing beetles. The reason you don't want to throw this away is because there will be eggs that will be laid down in here that will also eventually hatch. So you're going to want to find something that you can sift with that will be large enough holes that the food containing your mealworm babies will fall through but your beetles will be caught up in your sifting pan. Now at this point you simply want to replace your insect buffet in the bottom here, place your beetles back in here. And as your mealworms turn into beetles, you can keep replenishing the beetles in your breeding container. What you don't want to throw away is all of this that you just sifted. This will be where your baby mealworms are at. Now, you may look at this and think, there's no baby mealworms in here, I can't see them. And the fact of the matter is, you're not gonna be able to see them for quite a while. They are so tiny that it's very hard to see with the naked eye. Go ahead and get you another container and simply pour the sifted substrate back into that container. Once again, this is where all of your baby mealworms are going to be. Now at this point, all you want to do is place a piece of carrot on top of your substrate and trust me, your baby mealworms will find this. This will be the only evidence that you have mealworms in this for probably about the first two weeks until those mealworms get large enough that you can actually see them with your own eyes. So right here in this container is a bunch of baby mealworms that we sifted yesterday and you'll see as you run your hand through here, you can barely see they are tiny, tiny little baby mealworms just all over the place. But once again, they're very hard to see with the naked eye. In a couple of weeks, your mealworms are going to get larger and they're going to basically look like this right here. What you're also going to notice is a bunch of this frizzy looking stuff on the top. Now this is the shed skin from your mealworms. As they grow, they shed their skin. I'm going to show you a very, very simple trick to remove the shed sheds without removing your mealworms. Basically what you're going to need is a shop vac. 
Now, you're not gonna stick your shop vac all the way down into your worms. What you're gonna do is leave about three inches of space between the worms and the shop vac. The shop vac is gonna pull up the shed skin because it's very, very light. However, it won't suck up your mealworms unless you put it too close to them. So now at this point in time, you have a clean container with no shed skin. Now you wanna simply place in fresh potatoes or fresh carrots in order for them to drink. In about two more weeks, you're gonna probably want to sift out your container and put in fresh food. By that time, your mealworms are gonna pretty much be adults. You can sift out the mealworms like we showed you earlier and simply place some of them in the refrigerator where they'll go dormant and you can have them long term. Any of the mealworms that are left in the food eventually are gonna grow up and transform into beetles and thus starts the process all over again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks for watching.